started at a very early age uh, was probably very important. I mean, when I was about seven years old, I, I remember not wanting to do anything else with my life. I sort of knew that's what I wanted to do. That I wanted to be um, a pop artist or, um, or a songwriter. And as I got older, um, and Morris and Robin joined in when they were about seven, six or seven years old, uh, that it was sort of instinctive with them too. We loved music, and we loved creating, and we loved writing. We were writing as soon as we started, at the ages of six and nine, we began writing. And we loved making up songs. So it was always a desire to be known for our music. It was never a desire to be known to have money or to be rich. What we always wanted was to be approved musically. That was an early, a very early dream. It's hard for me to think of anything else because we've been doing it for so long. As, you know, from kids growing up, we've been doing the same thing. So it's hard to picture what I could really, I don't know what else I could do. <laughs> it's just never entered my mind because we've always done everything to Individuals, we, we have different personalities. There's a lot of things I admire about both my brothers. I mean, I, I admire Morris's spirit, his, um, his cooperative attitude to everything we do. Uh, Morris is a sort of um, the permanent middleman. I think I'm in between, really. I'm, I'm sort of like the bouncing the pad, if you like, from both brother. I, sometimes I'm the middle guy, you know, that may have to do something because they haven't quite made up their minds about it, and I'll make the majority vote or whatever. But, but I would say, yeah, Robin's a warrior. I think I tend to be a little bit more analytical about things, probably too analytical. Well, Robin is more of an introvert, I think. He's more into himself. He's more, he's not as outrageous as, say, I am sometimes. Morris has got a terrific spirit and a great sense of humor. And then I'd have to go on if I said uh, Robin has an, uh, an exceptional sense of humor. I think Barry is very sensitive, very, very warm person, very sensitive and gentle. Uh, and he's a, he's a peace, likes to keep the peace. Doesn't like to, doesn't like to argue about too much. You know, likes to sort of, if, he likes to, uh, I wouldn't say because he would let anything go or, or just agree for the sake of it, but he doesn't like, um, he doesn't like too much trouble. So he's a very, he's given very, very creative person. And we've had been very fortunate enough to be gifted with something that we've worked and molded, if you like, and people love it. It was one of those groups who were about to finish in the front in England, and we were on stage ready to go around as the stage turned. And as we did, uh, Dick Ashby, our personal manager, ran up on stage and said, it's just gone to number one. And that was the worst show we ever did. <laughs> Everybody was so overjoyed and over the moon, they didn't care what we did. You know, so we just played. It first came out, everyone thought it was the Beatles under a different name. Because it started off with a B and ended with an S. So Beatles, BGs. So they thought, ah, it's Beatles under a different name. When it was released in America, the, uh, a radio station in Pasadena played the death out of it and said it was the Beatles under a different name. After lonely days and how can you mend a broken heart? All of a sudden, there was a period of about three years that nothing was happening. Uh, 74, I think it was. And we went in a complete valley. Nobody wanted us. No label wanted us. No audience wanted us. We had to move to the Isle of Man, a little island off the, the English coast, uh, where we were born, actually. But uh, it's also a place because English tax at the time was phenomenal. It was 90% of the pound that you had to pay tax if you lived there. So three years later, well, about 18 months we lived in the Isle of Man, we decided to go over and record at the studio here in Miami called Criteria. So we cut the main course album in Criteria, and Jive Talking came off that. And people didn't know it was us. We played it, and they said, who? You mean, how can you mend a broken heart, Bee Gees? Those guys? 